I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. We are all called to be disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as told in today's gospel, uh, love one another. In every gospel is a call to mission. We are sent to continue Christ's work in today's world. My name is Morris Muldoon, Franciscan friar and bishop emeritus of the Diocese of Huticalpa in Honduras. I served the mission diocese for 29 years and retired on February 2nd of last year. Presently, I live uh, with my Franciscan community in Boston. Many years ago, I visited and preached at St. Michael the Archangel's Parish, uh, an event which initiated with the full support of the pastor and the faithful, a close relationship and mission interchange with the church in Honduras, a bond that continues up until today. When I first visited Honduras in 1967, I was struck by the deep level of poverty. Much of that poverty still exists today. Over the years, uh, we met many uh, challenges and truly changed the life of some of the poor. Not a small part of which is due to so many dedicated lay missioners who have assisted us. My heart and prayers are still open to the poor in Honduras, as well as to the many friends who have come throughout the years and gave their time, talents, and resources to build a local church. I want to come before the parish community of St. Michael the Archangel and thank you for your generous solidarity and support that you have shown to one of the poorest parishes of my diocese the parish of Nuestra Señora de Suyapa in Nueva Palestina, Olancho, Honduras. Our Lady of Suyapa was the first new parish I erected as bishop in 1985. It is dedicated to Our Lady as patroness of Honduras. If by chance you see a little girl in the streets of Cary with the name of Suyapa, you can be sure that she is from Honduras. Over many years, your apostolic work and missionary spirit has truly been a blessing from on high. And I'm here today to tell you, to show you, the difference you have made in the lives of the little ones of the gospel, our Christian brothers and sisters in the Church of Honduras. Honduras is located in Central America and is the second poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Our sister parish is located in the town of Nueva Palestina, which is situated in the southwestern part of the country, about 30 miles from the Nicaraguan border. Our sister parish, Nuestra Señora de Suyapa, is supported by its pastor, Padre Fernando. Padre Fernando's parish covers an area close to 160 square miles and supports over 30 remote villages called aldeas. Travel to the aldeas is over poor roads that are impassable during the rainy season. The lifestyle of the sister parish community is quite simple. Most of Padre's parishioners are subsistence farmers who earn less than $60 a month and support their families by living off the land since there is no industry in the area. Very few of Padre's parishioners have even the basic comfort of electricity. St. Michael sent our first delegation down to Honduras in 2002 and has sent a delegation each year since, including the one where the newly built church was dedicated last October. While we found the parishioners to be very poor in terms of world economics, we found rich hearts with a strong love for us and love for Jesus Christ. Through your generous support, the worship space was expanded and renovated, then dedicated on October 13, 2012. The new worship space has made their parish community into a family and has become a home and shelter in times of need. 
to support the Pastoral Leadership Council, we have provided Spanish Bibles, rosary beads, and prayer cards. We have ministered to them and made their spiritual burden a little easier. Since the early years, we have been able to assist our sister parish with basic medical needs and hygiene education. St. Michael's parishioners provide the funding for a part-time doctor, a nurse, and three health promoters that work with and treat the parishioners in Nueva Palestina and visit 17 of the 30 aldeas in the parish. The doctor and health promoters focus on the children and women in the area. They treat the needs of the pregnant women and the sick. Lack of latrines and the prevalence of parasites in water are the main causes of disease and dysentery. In addition, sewage is ingested by livestock, which contaminates a possible food supply for the families. While we have provided a number of latrines and water purification filters, the lack of sanitary facilities and clean water remains a major problem and cause of disease. We have seen a significant reduction in parasites among children in areas where we have installed latrines and clean water filters. As a result, we no longer need to provide parasitic-related medicines. These efforts, while not complete, are making a major difference in the lives and health of the children. We have helped over 200 families put roofs on their homes and concrete floors under their feet that keeps them dry in the rainy season and out of the mud. While we have assisted many families, there are still numerous families living in extreme conditions. Through your generous support and in partnership with NC State University, we started an agricultural program in 2012. NC State identified a professor of agriculture and we hired a local agricultural graduate to promote and teach farming to students in Nueva Choluteca High School. Students learn to raise food crops in a way that protects soil and water resources while at the same time learning critical skills. A demonstration farm has been established at the school for hands-on training and also serves to demonstrate these methods to community farmers. This resulted in crops that allowed our brethren to feed their families and have additional income. As part of this project, a well was built that provides water via irrigation during the dry season for the farm. One successful story is that of a parishioner farmer and mother called Sophie. Sophie is now a successful entrepreneur and her farm is growing because of your support. The education and assistance provided allow her to obtain a micro loan for coffee plants to grow her farm. One of our early delegations noticed that many children were not attending school during the day. We found out that while school is provided free by the government, each student had to have uniforms, shoes, books, and supplies in order to attend. At a cost of approximately $75 per year per student, many of the parish families were unable to send their children to school. Today, through the generous support of St. Michael's sponsoring families, over 450 children go to school. Last year, 22 of the students graduated from high school. When the program was first started, hardly any student went beyond the sixth grade. Through your support, we also built an education center that allows young women and men to be trained in various vocations. It is our hope that we can begin a process that will allow young people to learn a trade provide them a decent living and self-esteem. We are teaching them to fish. While we have made great progress, our work is far from complete. Subsistence farming is a tough way of life and most families barely make enough money to live. Electricity, while now available in the way of a Palestina, is far beyond the affordability of all but a few families. Cooking for the family is hard, where much of the day is spent gathering wood for the kitchen fire or carrying water from a nearby or not so nearby stream. The in-home kitchen fire also provides difficult challenges with an ever-growing increase of respiratory disease, particularly in the children. Children are very small and continue to lack basic vitamins and nutrition because of all these factors. Our health promoters do the best they can, but their resources and supplies are limited. Children born with health defects have limited or no hope for recovery. 
While our sisters and brothers in Honduras are poor in economic terms, they remain rich in faith and spirit, and rich in love for us and their love for Jesus Christ. They pray for us each and every day and are so very grateful for all we at St. Michael's have done for them. We are always greeted with smiles, and when we leave, we hear the familiar words, via con Dios, which means, go with God. As you can see, you have made a tremendous difference in their lives. However, our work is far from complete, and we need your continuous generosity and support. It is truly a rare opportunity that we have in our lives to make such a difference. Imagine what your help can do in the life of a child of a family. We ask you to respond. Uh, we need you to be generous. For $50 or the cost of a dinner here in the United States, you can provide a water purification system that will provide clean water to an entire family. For $100, you can provide a latrine for several families and give men, women, and children the dignity of not having to go to the bathroom in a nearby field and being able to eat their livestock without concern for a parasitic infection. For $200, you can provide a roof or a concrete floor for a family who is currently living in atrocious conditions. And for $1,000, you can change the lives of an entire village by providing clean water and housing to over 50 people. The need is so great, and your help is the only hope many of these people have. Let us live John's gospel as true disciples and missionaries of Jesus Christ, and show our love for the little ones. You will be blessed a thousand times over for helping those uh, least among us. Let us recall the words of Jesus Christ when he says, Whoever you do for these, the least of my brothers, you do unto me. I thank you, and may God bless you and keep you, your family, and your parish community. There are envelopes in your pews, and we are doing a second collection today using the bright colored baskets. If you do not have your checkbook with you, please take an envelope home and return it next week in the collection basket, drop it off in the parish office, or mail it in to the parish office. We will also have people in the back of the church after Mass today who will allow you to make a donation using a credit or debit card. Please be generous.